Hi, welcome back to the second video of the Cedra Smith uh, Microelectronics. This is a course taught at UTSA and uh, it's a uh, tutorial to help any of the students that are taking uh, uh, microelectronics. Uh, I left off at uh, chapter 2.1, completed that, so this is chapter 2.2 and it's the inverting op amp. If uh, you go to the, your book, you'll find figure 2.5. This is schematic in the book and it shows a uh, inverting uh, op amp. And the reason, the way to tell that it's an inverting is if uh, you look at your input source, this is your input. Okay, if your input is connected to the inverting side, then it's a inverting op amp. Okay, so basically, if you put a voltage, a positive voltage here, your output will be a negative. So basically, it flip flops it. Okay, now one thing that I do want to point out is that uh, I noticed that in the book, in figure 2.5. 2.6, 2.7, they draw the inverting uh, op amp like this. And I just want to point out that this is not really, I mean, the circuit will work, but the correct way is to always, at least from the design uh, standpoint, you always put a resistor right there okay this resistor is supposed to balance the impedance that the op amp sees looking out and if you look in this direction you see this resistor and if since it's connected to your input input a DC input source you can assume that that's shorted and then this resistor R2 is connected to the output and you can also assume that this is ground. Okay, so basically you have two resistors that are connected to this load, and the opposite side of the resistor are connected to ground. So basically, these two resistors are connected in parallel. So it's a uh, it's uh, R1 in parallel with R2. So whatever that value is, that combination, that's what you set this resistor. So in this case, it would be R1 in parallel with R2. This is the correct way of designing and inverting op amp. Now you may ask, well, why? Well, uh, it might be a little bit too early to be going into this, but right now we've been assuming that the uh, the op amps are ideal. Okay. And one of the assumptions, okay, one of the assumptions is that the current, and I'll, I'll label it as IB or I bias. I bias is the current that's supposed to be going into the op amp or out, depending on on the type of op amp they, they designed. So this is IB, I bias. Okay. And since we're assuming that it's an ideal op amp, we assume that the I bias is zero. Okay. So that's the assumption that we use. But in real world applications If you look at the app notes, everybody uses a resistor. Why? Because I bias is actually finite. It's an it actually does have a, a current. And it can be anywhere from one microamp all the way down to picofarads. Okay. And even though it's a very small 
uh, current, if you have an unbalance in these two impedances, then you'll have, let's say for example, if this resistance is higher than this resistance, well this node will have a slightly higher voltage than that and it introduces errors. And one way of canceling the errors, and basically you want to cancel errors due to I bias. Okay. And usually these are called second order effects. And uh, I'm not sure whether the Cedra book covers this, but uh, I'm pretty sure uh, you'll cover it in maybe some of the other classes. Okay. So let me go ahead and continue. Okay. Let me draw the circuit again. I'll call this R3. It's going to be V out minus positive. Okay. Uh, the other concept that I'd like to talk about is let me see if I can develop this. Okay. We're still assuming that it's an ideal op amp. Okay, so again we're going to assume that I bias is equal to zero, meaning that the current in or out into the op amp or out is zero. Okay, and because it's zero, that means that this, the voltage across here is zero, and if it's zero, that means that that node has zero volts. Okay. So this was the first assumption. Okay. Regarding an ideal. The second assumption is that VD plus is equal to VD minus. So this is VD plus. That's VD minus. So by invoking this rule, since this is zero volts, that means that this has to be zero volts. Okay. So the next concept is that this node, by virtue, virtue that it's also zero volts, this node is called a virtual ground. Okay. That's uh, important. Okay. So keep in mind, since this is zero, because of the feedback circuit, the feedback will force, in other words, the output will go to whatever voltage is needed to bring this voltage equal to this. And in this case, since this is zero, this has to be zero. Okay? And if, if it's zero, then you consider that node as being virtual ground. Okay? So, if you put, let's say, a one volt here, and let's assume that these are 1K, and let's say that this is 1K as well. Okay? Well, if you have one volt, and you have a, a zero, that means you get a positive and you get a negative and you're going to have voltage going in that way. Okay. Okay, since this voltage 
that resistor is connected here and it's connected to one volt. The current is going to go in this direction. We know that this is zero. So in this case, the current is very easy to calculate. It's one volt divided by 10K. You have 100 microamps. Okay. Now we know that this current that's flowing through here cannot flow in here because this is zero. Okay. There's no current. We're assuming that it biases zero. So that means that that current has to flow in that direction. Okay. Now if it flows in that direction, then that means that this is going to be positive. That's going to be negative. Now remember, this voltage is zero, and since this is a hundred, this also has to be a hundred microamps. Okay. So now we know that the output voltage is going to be a negative voltage. Okay, because it's negative, this is zero. And it's going to be a hundred microamps times R2, which is 10k ohms. Okay, so you end up with V out equals negative, and that should be negative one volt. So basically you put a positive voltage, one volt, and you end up with a negative one volt. Okay. So that was done, I guess, analytically or at least doing a little bit of circuit uh, thought or trying to think, think things out. Let me go ahead and see if I can insert. Okay, let me draw the circuit again. Let me see if we can derive an equation. Okay, if we make these 10k, 10k, this has to be the combination, the parallel combination of those two. Okay, this is R1, R2, R3, and I'm going to change instead of N, I'll, I'll, I'm going to label this as Vs, and I'm going to label that as V out. Okay, so to come up with a mathematical equation or the transfer function, okay, you do a KCL, okay, and you do the KCL at the VD plus node, and you do the KCL at the VD minus node, okay. So in this case, we know that uh, V D plus that is the current. Okay, we're just gonna wing it for, for right now. We're gonna say it's V D plus divided by R three. Okay. And we'll say that it's equal to zero. Okay. So that's that note. V D plus that's the note. So now we're going to do the VD minus. Okay, so it's going to be this node minus this. So we'll say VD minus minus VS. This voltage minus this voltage divided by the by R1 plus this voltage minus this voltage V out divided by R2 okay. 
should be R2. And all of that is equal to 0. Okay. Now, let me see. Okay. Now, since we know there's no current here and we knew we know that this is zero volts so we can make a statement that VD plus is equal to zero okay and since VD plus is equal to zero we can say that it's also that VD minus is equal to zero okay so we have that statement okay so we can go ahead expand this a little bit VD minus R1 ES R1 plus VD minus R2 minus V out R2 equals zero so I expand that so we know that VD minus is zero so that goes to zero that goes to zero so now we have ES R1 minus V out R2 okay I'll go ahead and bring switch it around and we should get R2 R1 VS so this is the transfer function okay and okay let's go ahead and put some numbers we should already know the answer. Okay. So we know that R2 is a 10k ohm. And R1 is the same. Okay. So they cancel, right? And on the previous example, I said that v, Vs was 1 volt. Okay. So basically, V out equals negative one volt. So it matches this matches that. Okay. So here we kind of did the circuit analysis, followed the currents and just basically calculated what the voltage out. In this method we came up with a transfer function, a general function, and uh by Knowing the values of the resistors, we can find out what uh, what the output voltage is going to be. Okay, so uh, that should be enough to cover the chapter 2.2. The next section would be the effects of the finite open loop gain. That'll be the third video. Thank you for watching.